one, Mr. B from Backyard Barbecue. And I know what you're saying. You're like, man, another box? Absolutely right. But first, before I go any further, I want to thank my man, Sammy B. Um, he saw my video, man. He actually, uh, when I did my Kamado in a uh, previous video, when I was talking about the $15 plate you can buy at Walmart to make your uh, Kamado a smoker, he hit me up and he's like, hey, man, I just got one sitting around, man. If you want it, I'll send it to you. And I was like, well, shoot, send it to me. You know me. I do reviews on anything. So it, I am truly blessed, man. Thank you once again, Sammy B, man. He sent me this right here. I already opened it. I ain't taking it out of the box, right? I just opened it uh I came back from a little trip, and this was sitting at the front door. Got the uh, the two brackets. I mean, I probably have to tighten this up. Yep. And the stone. Let me, I actually have to take this out so y'all can see it. It's a lava stone, right? Obviously, you can tell it's been used. It's about to get used today too. So we're gonna go ahead without further ado, and I'm gonna cook y'all some baby backs today, right? Once again, shout out to Sammy B. We're gonna test this dog on our stone out. So it's kind of like a review of the lava stone. At the same time, I'm cooking y'all baby backs. So you get two for one special today, right? Everybody love that. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and put this thing on the grill. I don't even know how to put it in. I'm about to figure it out. We're gonna do this live, y'all. So don't laugh at me if I mess this up. So give me a second, put my box down, turn the camera around. I already got my grill going. Maybe I should have waited. I want to burn myself up. It's only at 200 degrees right now, so maybe I can get a pass. All right, let's see if we can figure this out, y'all. Uh, let's see. Here. Okay. Kinda simple, actually. Just sit the stone right on there. Voila. Let's, uh, look at that, first time. Bam! Anyway, we're gonna get in, go in this kitchen. I'm gonna put this on here so I can uh, clean this grates up once they get hot. And we're gonna go to the kitchen and let's talk about what we need to do to make these baby backs, y'all. Let's do this. Shout out to my, my, uh, my brother, B-Lo. Guy I used to work with, he's retired now. He asked for it, I'm bringing it to you. Pork baby ribs. Yep, them baby backs. Yeah, I even went out on a limb and didn't even go to, to the spot where I get them cheap just because I didn't feel like driving. But this is for you, brother. Anyway, I'm gonna use this famous, man, this stuff here is so good. I swear you, man, you can probably put this on potato chips, or whatever it is. This is from Carol Sausage Country Store, Sweet Barbecue Season. Had I known this stuff tastes this good just by itself, I would have bought probably 10 bottles. So when I go back through that little small town in uh, uh, in Georgia, I am stopping to uh, get it. Actually, I will. Do they have a website on here? Let me see. Yes, they do. I'm going to put the website on there, man. Maybe they got, uh, actually, I'm going to go there myself and see if they got the season. But I'm going to put it on there for you. See if you can find it. I'm just going to mix a small amount of nature seasoning and use mustard as my base. Uh, if you're new to the channel, the reason why I use mustard, remember, well, if you don't know, fun fact, mustard, when you baste meat, any kind of meat, pork, hell, you can do beef too. I don't recommend it on beef, but you, when you baste it, or what I call basting, is because when you put seasoning on meat, directly on meat, it does not stick. For the most part. As soon as you pick the meat up, you see a lot of your seasoning fall down, which is wasting money. So you use a base, which will, or uh, coating, which will adhere to the seasoning as well as the meat. Uh, the two favorite things that people use, standard mustard. You ain't got to get the cheap great value. But uh, that's what I use because it's cheap. Uh, or you can use some olive oil. Let me see if I have some olive oil. Simple. Olive oil. Once again, some great value. You see what I keep in the kitchen, y'all. Light tasting olive oil. And you all you do is pour it on there. If you're scared of getting the mustard taste, don't even worry about it. Uh, you're not even gonna taste the mustard whatsoever. Promise you. Promise you. Just take a small, take a rib and cut it, you know, a, a slab of ribs, or hell, even take a baby back and just cut a little piece off and, and just try it. You will not taste the mustard whatsoever. Obviously, you won't taste the olive oil, but different methods for different folks. 
I'm using mustard. That's because what I like. And we're going to go from there. So what I'm going to do is, oh, and another ingredient I'm putting in here, paprika. The reason why I'm doing paprika, paprika really doesn't have a taste, right? But what it does is it brings, makes the ribs, the color man, cherry red. And, of course, I'm going to use some cherry uh, uh, wood chips. So cherry with the paprika color going to have them ribs looking reddish. So be on the lookout for that when, uh, when I'm, every time I open the grill and just see how dark that red reddish color is. So without further ado, I'm going to set myself up so I can go ahead and pull the, uh, the membrane off the back. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm not going to do both. I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, and then we'll go ahead and season them up and put them on the grill. We'll be back, y'all. All right, we're back, y'all. Just in case y'all happen to care, paprika, right? Dollar stuff, right? Uh, here's my two slabs of baby bags. Simple. All I'm going to do is flip it over. And this is a membrane, y'all. This white little film that people can't stand, including myself, once you get it started, actually, let me flip it over. And generally what you do is you try to get it your uh, whatever you're using, you try to get it uh right below the film to get it started. And once you get it started, see how I got it puckered up? This is the reason why. See how that looks? I'll take one of my napkins and grab it and then pull it. The reason why I got the napkin. So I'll follow that all the way. All the way on one end. And people ask, you know, I've seen all over the internet, why, you know, what do you recommend? Uh, pulling a membrane or not? Be honest with you, me, because I'm in the South and I love my meat. Um, I love the taste of it. Or if people showcase their skills based off of if you can taste the meat without putting sauce on it. Maybe, you understand what I mean? So. Let's take chicken, for instance, right? Fried chicken or any kind of chicken. If you have skill in the South, you don't need hot sauce or anything like that to impress the audience. That is like a leisure for somebody, you know, who just loves hot sauce on, any, on, on anything. Um, you have that as, as a side. So when I showcase my skills, I like or... or, or I'm evaluating somebody else and their, their ability to, to barbecue or cook in the kitchen. I evaluate them based off how well the food tastes without that. Because you don't even need to season meat if you're just going to cover it with barbecue, sweet baby rays or whatever your favorite uh, barbecue sauce is. Right? So, hence why I do what I do. All right? That's why I buy all the different flavors. Uh, if I was cheap, I would just not buy anything. Probably just use something like this and then throw it on the grill. And then mask it with some some barbecue sauce, and you like, oh man, this is the best thing ever. Really? It don't take it don't take a rocket scientist. Hey, if you are uh, just if you never barbecued before and you watching this channel, the quickest way to uh, say for instance you got a uh, a birthday party or something, and they task you with cooking and you don't know what to do. Hey man, get you some some simple seasoning like the Nature's. Show y'all the membrane go just like that. All right, uh, get you some simple nature seasoning mustard as I go and just go for what you know, man. Put it on the grill, and once it's done, as long as you ain't burning it up, you should be good to go. Put you some uh, sweet baby rays on there. Remember, I'm coating this right. All I'm doing is coating it, coating it not too much, and like I said. What we was talking about before the membrane uh people are torn between taking the membrane off and i went on a tangent about me being from the south or whatever but it has nothing to do with that uh because people from the south like it with the membrane on if you can't cook cook it with the membrane on because what happened is your meat will fall apart if you take the membrane off if you leave it on the grill too long uh especially when you're smoking meat and it gets real tender it will fall apart so a lot of people like to keep the membrane on so that the rib, even if the front side, which I consider this to be the front side, uh, even if it gets to that point, then you won't have to worry about uh, the rib falling apart. 
Some people like bite through, some people like the tug at it. Uh, depending on what you like. So simple, all I'm gonna do is take paprika, sprinkle lightly on, on each side. Take my seasoning. And then come back with the natures and then do the same thing on both sides. Wrap it up in saran wrap and you'll see the meat start to sweat. So I'll let this sit for, since this is small, uh, small piece of meat. If it was a big, 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 the big slab or the St. Louis, the big one is what you buy in the pack. You have to cut yourself to make a uh, sweet baby, I mean a uh, sweet baby raise, make baby back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these sweat, sweat it out in the refrigerator for about four hours. And then we're going to come back and throw them on the grill. All right, so I'll see y'all at the grill with my uh, baby back. Peace. All right, backyard barbecuers, we back. Remember I told you we're going to use some cherry. This is that Kingsfoot chips, right? Even though it's a Kamado, you don't have to put chunks in there. But you do have to use some kind of concoction. So I'm using my steel case that I use on the Weber grill. All I'm going to do is pour the cherry in here. I'm going to show you where I'm placing. All about placement. To create smoke. Another fun fact, uh, you can take aluminum foil if, if you don't have one of these. Uh, actually, I should show you. I should do a video on how to do that. Take uh, some aluminum foil, pull you some of it, these uh, chip, uh, chips in there, whatever flavor you're using, and sit it on your grill. So what I'm going to do is, my grill, 291, let me get the... Uh, my controller so you can see it. 291 is blinking. Right? Remember the key is to let your temp go above where you want it to cook at. Alright, before you put this cold meat on there. So, what I'm going to do is, I am going to slide my chair. I'm not going to put it under the, uh, in the coal itself. I'm sliding it right up under on the bottom grate. Woo, that's hot. And then we're going to stick our slab of ribs on there. Easy day. Easy day. Short ones should fit real perfect. You hear beep, beeping. All right. And that's simple, just like that. Let me actually get this off of the thermometer gauge because the tip is going to vary when I do that. And then we're good to go. So with this, we are doing the 2 2 1 method, right? Let me get right here. 2-2-1 method, right? So what that means is two hours pumping straight cherry cherry smoke to it. Um, got the paprika on that, so it's going to be deep red. Then what I'm going to do is the next two hours is in aluminum foil. I'm going to show you that process, and then we're going to come back for the last hour. Remember, it's two hours smoke, two hours in aluminum foil, and then one hour back on the grill to loosen up. You may be asking why I do the 2 one method. Well, you hear this beeping. Hold on, let me hit this button. So what it does is two hours of smoke, right? And it's not gonna make the meat tender, but when you put anything in aluminum foil, it tends to tenderize it. So it'll be almost to the point where it's falling off the bone. And then what you do is you take it out of the aluminum foil and put it back on the grill for the last hour to tighten back up. And once that five hours is up, man, you're gonna have ribs that all change. Try it, let me know, comment below if you've tried it. Tell me if you like it, if you don't, and why you didn't like it or why you did like it. Anyway, we'll be back at two hours and then let you see what it looks like. I'm not even gonna open it until then. See you in a little bit. Alrighty, it has been two hours and maybe three minutes. Let me show you close up of my temp. That was a gauge. You see that, 223? It's been hovering around 223 for the last two hours, which is perfect. Uh, I'm about to open it up for the first time and see what it looks like. Once again, two hours. Give you a close up. Of these ribs as I get ready to put them on the let me turn this actually there you go so what am I going to do is if you look right here you will see brown sugar I have let me set this up uh, some butter that I melted and key ingredients some standard don't ask me why great values on everything, but I don't know. Maybe it's a great value. Anyway, apple juice, 
the last key ingredient. And I'm going to show you on one of the ribs real quick exactly what you do for the two next two hours. I'm going to simply pour a little butter. Just a little. Take the ribs. Look how they've been so far. They're getting there. And take a little apple juice. And this is to keep it moist. Right, because once I wrap it up, it's going to develop a, a like steam type uh, setup, if that's what you want to call it. And all we do is wrap them up. Simple as that. Simple as that. Pretty simple, easy actually. Just like that, and stick it back on there. Yep. Make sure you curl the top and do the same for the other one. Reminder, make sure when you turn your ribs, show you real quick what I mean. And if you notice, here's another fun fact for you. If you hadn't seen any of my other uh, videos, I would tell you about this. The aluminum foil has a shiny side and a dull side. Not too many people know this, but the shiny side is not the side that you leave outside. The shiny side is what holds the heat in. So when you put in your meat, if you can see, this is my shiny side. And all I'm going to do is take the rib and turn it face down. Face down. Got it? Easy day. And then wrap it up. Pour the, orange, I mean the uh, apple juice in and then wrap it. Got it? Is it day. So let me go ahead and wrap this and stick it back on the grill. And I'll see you in another two hours, y'all. Alrighty, we are back, y'all. It is four hours into the cook. Or in other words, the last, well, the next two hours of the cook. I want y'all to see these ribs, y'all. Let me give you a close up real quick. That's the bottom of it. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, I got juice running off, so give me a second. Slide this away. Make this so the liquid doesn't leak. Taste that. Mm. Mm. All right, what I'm gonna do is flip this over. And give you a close up. Mm, that's good. All right. So the next step is one more hour of cooking. One more hour of cooking without the uh, without the uh, aluminum foil. And then these babies will be ready to go ahead and eat. Let me show you this last one. And then we're gonna go ahead and close this so we can go ahead and get this done before it gets dark. All right. Uh this is gonna be more difficult than I thought. I'm trying to show you with the camera. Bear with me. These are tender. Real tender. Get out of the way. See what I mean by tender? Look at that. Some people like that. I don't. That just means it cooked a little too long. Uh, but all I'm going to do is flip it over. Actually, I'm going to take this in the house and eat it. Yep. And then go from there. We're going to close this lid. Go ahead and let this finish up this cook. 
and then uh like i said an hour and i'll come back and show you how it looks all right all right y'all we back let's see what this final product look like got my tray because i'm assuming they pretty much done hmm look at it y'all see that ranch color i'm talking about from that paprika this is the five two i mean the, the five two the uh two two one method Yep. Slide it on my tray. And the last rack. Yeah, close up. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, the even better one. Can you see that? Yep. There we have it, y'all. Turn this around real quick. I'm going to send y'all on y'all way. All right, so there you have it. Uh, like I said, shout out to my boy Sammy B for giving me the uh, the plate. So you like it worked like a chip. Um, we use the 2-2-1 method doing baby bags. If you were doing St. Louis or the big style, you would do 3-2-1. Three, three hours of cooking, two hours of aluminum foil, one hour uh, back on the grill, outside of the aluminum foil. Um, so there you have it. I might actually do one on the St. Louis cut uh, sometime in the near future, just because I got a couple events coming up. But who knows? We'll see. Comment below. Let me know what you want to see next. Uh, this one goes out to you below. You requested it. Here it is. Hopefully uh, somebody out there was curious to know uh, how to do uh, baby backs. Either way, it's out there. This is your boy, Mr. B from Backyard Barbecue, cooking up baby backs in the backyard. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Share my videos, y'all. Let the world know we are here to do it. Uh, I'm truly blessed, before I go, I'm truly blessed to be in a position where I can help others through videos. Uh, I communicate with people offline in reference to grills and stuff like that. Love doing that, man. It's just, just me. Um, like I said, Sammy B sent me the stone. Wasn't even looking for it. Appreciate it. You know, um, uh, my guy over at uh, Kick Ass Basket put me up with the basket. Did an awesome review on it, and it's an awesome product. So, you know, he got the grade A stamp of approval. You got to stick on my, on my smoker. Uh, whatever, man. You never know. You know, um, might even do a giveaway here soon, even before I hit 1,000. So, keep coming below. You never know. I might just look at it one day and say, let me send somebody something. Keep coming, man. Have fun. That's what it's all about. Thank y'all for watching. And until next time, this your boy.